Hey guys, welcome back. So today I've created this look using the new JLo and Inglot collection. So I've got two lip options for you. So it's nice to be back. It's been a few weeks since you've seen my face on the channel because I've had a couple of models in and I've done a hair look for you. I'm back, so let's get to it. This is the new JLo and Inglot collection and it is stunning. What a beautiful PR package to receive. Now the little collection that I've got here isn't the entire collection that's on offer, but I think these items are specially curated to create JLo's signature glow. So this is the eyeshadow palette. What I love about Inglot palettes is that they're magnetised and they also give you the freedom to chop and change the colours that are inside your palette. We've got three satin finish eyeshadows but there are actually 20 in the collection and I believe the one on the far left is actually a bronzer. The brush I'm going to be using is the Zoeva 231 Petite Crease Brush and I've specifically chosen this because it's got a tapered tip to it. I can use this to pull the colour out in a V shape which we want to create on the outer edge and also to run that through the socket. This brush is particularly great if you've got smaller eyes because it makes working that eyeshadow through the socket really easy. I personally would have liked a darker brown to go through the socket. This has a kind of slight shimmer to it. So it's not as intense as a matte brown would be. There is a shade in the collection called Bordeaux which looks like it would be perfect. But we're going to work with what we've got. So I'm now taking my base shadow brush by Real Techniques and softening the colour. I've taken that through the socket and I'm pulling it up and out to create a bit of a wing on the outer edge. And then I'm using my blending brush to soften that each time I apply the colour. How much you apply is completely up to you, but I really want to build up the intensity because this colour isn't that intense. The pigment is great, but as I said, it's not a dark brown. And ideally, I would use a darker brown to create that contour to the eye, but we will achieve it with this colour. It's just going to be a case of layering it. Also, don't forget that I'm in a lot stronger lighting, so in the flesh this would look a little bit more intense. It's just that because I'm in studio lighting, I need to layer it a few more times than you probably will need to. I really do love Inglot eyeshadows. Their pigment is just so beautiful. The colour payoff is really great. There's never really any fall down and they just blend beautifully. Okay, so you can see we've got this beautiful shape to the eye. It's lifted on the outer edge in that kind of V shape, a very subtle soft wing. And we've pulled that through to the socket. Not everybody will be able to do this depending on your eye shape as to whether you've got enough space between your lid and your eyebrow. But if you do have enough space to put it through, it will really help to create that kind of soft contour to the eye. Very reminiscent of JLo. And using that same tapered brush, I'm taking the same colour underneath the eye, connecting that with the outer corner of the top lid, and then using my blending brush to soften all the edges. Going back to the eyeshadow palette, I'm taking the middle shade which is kind of like a pink satin and I'm applying this over the entire mobile lid, this is the part that moves and we're using a flat shader brush to apply this. The reason I'm using this particular brush is because the bristles are flat so it packs the colour on and because the bristles are tightly knit together you don't lose any of the colour in between. The next colour I'm taking is the Satin Ivory, this is a beautiful highlight shade especially for the inner corner of the eye. As you can see, one swipe of it is super intense. It's really beautiful. That's why I'm also going to apply a very small amount to the arch of the eyebrow. This is a great way to make your eyebrow bone really pop and it's really great to give more structure to your face. Anywhere you add highlight is going to make that area look more prominent. I'm going back to the brown eyeshadow and just making it a little bit more intense on the outer corner. I'm loving how glowy the eyes look in with the shimmery taupe shade. A lot of the time JLo will wear a cream along her waterline to make her eyes look bigger, but if she does a smoke then it'll often be a brown along the waterline. So I'm using Bobbi Brown's Long Wear Gel Eyeliner in the shade Sepia Ink, which is a brown. To wear black would just be too intense with this kind of soft taupey brown shade. If it was more of an intense brown then we could get away with a black, but definitely brown for this look. I'm also using this to tight line. To do this I'm blinking onto the brush and pulling it along the top. To accentuate the top lash line, I'm using Max Eye Pencil in the shade Coffee. The best way to do this is to pull your skin taut on the outer edge, look down into a mirror so that your skin is nice and taut, and then run the pencil really close to the lash line. I am going to take this all the way across. It can tickle a little on the inside, it just takes some getting used to. This is the mascara that comes in the collection, which is really attractive. It's a matte black tube with gold writing, and the actual wand itself is quite small, so it's great if you've got little lashes, the ideal size for both top and bottom. I'm not really a fan of mascaras when you first use them. I like them when you've been using them for at least a week or two, because the air gets in, the formula thickens, and it really starts to become the perfect mascara. First off, I'm quite impressed with it considering it is brand new. 
The only thing is my lashes are quite long and I do tend to make a bit of a mess when I first use a mascara. When it's slightly thicker I don't tend to be as messy with it. So this is one coat. It does lengthen your lashes, it doesn't really thicken them but again it is a brand new mascara. I wouldn't really be able to tell you how good it is until I've used it for a little while. It's a really great wand and I quite like how black the mascara is. Some of them are a bit of a blue black and I don't really like that. But this is quite obviously black. So this is one coat on both lashes. I'm then going to apply a couple of coats to my bottom lashes before going in with a couple of lash inserts which I'll do when I come back to the eyes. So moving on to the face, I'm using her bronzer which is Boogie Down Bronze which I believe is a matte finish if I can remember off the top of my head. I really really liked this. There are a few of these in the collection so you can choose different shades. I'm taking this across the tops of the cheekbones, around the hairline, a little bit across the nose to give the skin a kind of bronzed feel which is obviously very reminiscent of JLo. By the way I've already done my foundation, I've got a medium base on and I've just used the Armani Luminous Silk. This matte bronzer is a little bit warm for the face, instead I'm going to use it in the socket of the eye. And I'm using a fluffy blending brush to apply this, and I'm tapping off the excess product and working that softly through the socket. For me this is the perfect way to finish off that bronzy smoke. I love to do this when I'm creating a really dark smoky eye, having that kind of warm brown in the socket just really finishes it off. You can also use what's left on the bristles to work that underneath the outer corner of the lower lash line. So moving on to highlight, this is probably the most impressive product of the collection. It's the Radiant Highlighter called Live in the Highlight. And this is the most reflective highlight I've ever come across. You could probably see your reflection in my cheekbone. Now you know I like to err on the side of caution, so I'm using the most minuscule amount. But if you love a highlighter, then you need to get your hands on this because it is phenomenal. I have textured skin, so it's only going to make my skin look bloody awful. But if you've got great skin texture, then you are going to love it. I'm also amping up the highlight that I've already applied to the eyes and a little bit on the centre of the lids. To finish off the eyes, I'm adding in some individual lashes just to the outer corners of the eyes to give a bit of a fluffy, flirty look. If you're unsure how to apply eyelashes, I have a tutorial covering all different lash applications. If, like me, you're a fan of keeping the lips nice and simple, then JLo's Goldie Lips is perfect. It's a clear gloss with gold flecks to it, so it looks gold in the tube, but it actually applies clear with a beautiful gold hue to it and your lips look absolutely stunning when the gold shimmery particles catch the light. The other lip option is this beautiful red. It's called Besame, which is actually Spanish for kiss me. This gives a lovely payoff. It's really comfortable to wear. It's very hydrating and it contains vitamins A and E, as well as apricot kernel oil, which is great for moisturizing. And I believe there are about eight shades available in the collection. It actually looks more like an orangey red on camera, but it's definitely more of a pinky red. It's such a beautiful shade. I decided to take some of that loose radiant highlighter and apply it to the tops of my shoulders. If you're on holiday this is a must, I'm definitely going to take it away to Morocco with me. It looks flipping amazing if you've got a tan, especially down the front of your legs. And that completes my look using the JLo Inglot collection. Overall I think it's an absolutely beautiful collection. If you enjoyed the tutorial please give it a thumbs up. Tap my photo on screen to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube my social handles are on screen and if you missed last week's tutorial that's also on screen for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!